All right, guys, let's take a look at a single phase RL series circuit. So we've got an AC source, and we've got some type of resistive load, and we've got an inductive load. We'll throw those bad boys in series. Okay, and we're gonna use R to denote the resistive value and L to denote the inductive value. And remember that L is based off of Lenz's law for inductance. Okay, so, um, each of these guys will be using a right angle triangle to find most of the answers. Uh, but the easiest way to find one of the values would be to look at the current. The current is the same in the entire circuit. So we could say that the total current is equal to the resistive current and it's equal to the inductive current. There's only one path for current to flow, so it must be the same through each of those components. All right, so if current's the same, then the voltage must be a little bit messed in this circuit. So let's look at the voltage. Now we'll use Pythagorean's theorem to find the total voltage because each of those resistive and inductive voltages do not happen at the same time. They're 90 degrees out of phase. So we'll take the square of the resistive voltage plus the square of the inductive voltage. Depending on your calculator, you may need to use those double brackets there. And then we are interested in the length of the side rather than the area, so we'll take the square root of those values. Now, we'll look at the right angle triangle, and we've got the resistive voltage as the adjacent. We've got the inductive voltage as the opposite, and we've got the total voltage as the hypotenuse. Okay, so now we have voltage, current. Uh, let's take a look at impedance. So again, the resistive value and the inductive reactance, or the cannery EMF on the coil, are not going to happen at the same time. There's only one path for current to flow there, so we don't have to use the reciprocal equation. So again, we're going to take the square of the adjacent plus the square of the opposite, and then we'll take the square root of those guys. So again, if we use a right angle triangle to look at each of those values, resistance, inductive reactance, and impedance. So resistance is the physical property of the, the resistor. Uh, the XL is the inductive reactant, which is the cannery MF or magnetic resistance of the coil. And the impedance is the total for the circuit. So we'll put Z for our total for the circuit. Now, if we want to look at power, Power is VA for this circuit. And again, it's going to be our wattage, the adjacent squared, plus the opposite. Now the opposite is VARS L squared. And again, we'll take the square root of those values. If we were to draw out a right angle triangle for our power values, VA is the total, wattage is our resistive value, and VARS, subscript L, is for the coil. All of these guys have the exact same ratio. I haven't drawn them identically, but they all have the exact same angle and exact same ratios between VR and VT, resistance and impedance, wattage over VA. And the VARS L, that would be the potential energy that's held in the magnetic field of the coil. So it doesn't give off any heat, but it does, it is a form of power. Okay, so now if we're looking at the power factor for this type of circuit, or the efficiency of that circuit, well, we could take VR over VT, so that ratio, or we could look at the resistance over the impedance, or we could take the values that we're usually taking, the watts over the VA. All of those guys are looking at the adjacent over the hypotenuse and the ratio of the adjacent over the hypotenuse is using cos. So if we need to find that angle and we know the power factor, then we can take the inverse cos of any of those ratios of the power factor. Okay. In the background we always have one more equation there the inductive reactance, so that's XL is equal to 2 times pi times frequency times L. And XL is always 
and ohmic value. Okay, so let's take a look at an example now. For this guy, we have the single phase RL series circuit. And I've given you a few values. I've given you the voltage across the resistor. And I've given you three decimal places. So it looks like I'm looking for a specific current there. So the first step there, seeing as we know that current flows in one direction through all of these components here, well, the first thing that we might want to do is be to find the current in the circuit. These guys, voltage, current, and whatever form of resistance, always provide us with Ohm's law. So in order to find that first value, we can take the 70.149, that voltage, divided by our 67 ohms, and that's going to provide us with a current of 1.047 amps. Okay, now we can bring that current right across. That value is here, 1.047 amps, and that value is here. Right? Total circuit current, resistive current, and inductive current are equal. Okay, that was our step number one. Now to make things easy, it looks like we have an inductive re reactance value of 93. We've got a current of 1.047. So now we can find our inductive voltage by multiplying 93 ohms times 1.047. And that provides us with a voltage here of 97.371 volts. This is our second step. Okay, so now we found each of the Ohm's Law values. And we've got 70.149 volts. And we're going to have to square that value. Plus 97.371 squared. Take the square root of that. And going back to this equation here. right? So we're working off of that voltage equation. So we take the resistive value, 70.149 squared plus our 97.371 squared, take the square root, and we find that the total voltage is 120 volts. So that's why I had that three decimal places there. These guys will always be at 60 hertz. No reason to screw up on different frequencies here. Okay, so now we've got two values now, 120 volts and 1.047 amps, and now we can find our impedance because any three of those guys will be Ohm's law. So our third step here was to find our total voltage. And now we'll just use Ohm's law, 120 divided by 1.047 to find our total impedance of 114.62 ohms. A quick way to double check your values here is that your impedance on the series circuit will always be greater than the largest value. Okay, and if we take the 67 squared plus the 93 squared, take the square root, you'll find a value that's very close to the 114.62 ohms. Okay, now we've got all of the power values there. If we wanted to add in a few equations here for power, well, for power, for single phase, power is always equal to voltage times current. Power is always equal to I squared times R, or I total squared times Z, right? Just take in any of the resistance values, Z, R, or XL on any of these equations. And we can also use V squared over R. And if we were in the total value, then we would use impedance. If we were in the coil value, we would use XL in place of the resistance. So all of these guys for the VA, the power and the VARs, we can just take in this case, the 120 times the 1.047 amps, and we'll find that we find a total VA of 125.64 VA. If you take the 70.149 volts times the 1.047 amps, you get a wattage value of 73.446 watts. If we take the 97.371 volts times the 1.047 amps, remember voltage times current, then you'll find a VARS value of 1.0, sorry, 101.947, and the units for that is VARSL. 
Okay, there's no capacitor in there, so we leave the values for the capacitor out. And now we can find the power factor. We can find the power factor with a number of equations here. We can look at the ratio of voltage resistance over total voltage, resistance over impedance, wattage over VA. Okay, so any of those values, let's just take the wattage over the VA. 73.446 watts divided by 125.64 VA. And your calculator gives you a value of 0.584, which tells us that this circuit is 58.4% efficient. If we wanted to find the angle that corresponds to that, we would use this equation, the inverse cos of the power factor. And because it's so inefficient, it's, you know, it's only like 58.5% efficient, then the total voltage and total current are 54 degrees out of phase. Okay, the last value we have to find there is the L value. That's right. So if we wanted to find L, well that's equal to our XL value divided by 2 times pi times the frequency. And in this case the frequency is 60 hertz. So if we take our XL value of 93, divided by 2 times pi times 60, that gives you an inductance value of 0 0.247 hertz. Okay, just to recap there, uh, this was our first step here in order to find the current. Then we use Ohm's law to find our inductive voltage. We use Pythagoras to find our 120 volts for our total voltage. Ohm's law gave us our impedance and then we went across and we found each of our individual power values then we found the efficiency of the circuit by using any of those power factor ratios and finally we found the physical properties of the coil the inductance by using a little bit different equation here where we took the XL divided by 2 pi F to find that inductance value. All right, guys, switch off to the next uh, video. The next one is going to be an RL parallel circuit.